Okay, I forgot one more um, part. At least I got this organizing part. I've done this video several times before. Okay. Um, and I actually started I actually started referring to it and I was about to explain it in the first video. The, the mother video of these two commentaries that I added below. When, let's go back to the example of the babies. The babies, the children got upset because one of, was his little African American, I like to say Africans of Amer uh, Americans of African descent for the same reason that I'm explaining. I don't want to say a noun that categorizes a people. Um, Skip frames detected 60% over the last two minutes a few seconds ago. I wonder what that means. Okay. Um, and he goes to the parent and says, you know, he stole my, he doesn't say the black kid because he doesn't know that. He's just interested because he's so different. He's fascinated. All he's thinking is another child my age. He stole my, my, um, my toy. He, 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 ran, he ran off with my toy. Not he stole. He ran off with my toy. And so the mother says, who? You know, Tony, because he knows his name already. He doesn't say the black kid. The mother then says, oh, the black kid, as he looks at, her fa at the father, right? And the child learns for the first time that his little friend that ran off with his toy is known by the ones he's learning from to be an adult and to understand the world that he's in a category. He's not another little boy, but he's a black little boy. So far, it's not so harmful because maybe we are visual beings that do more, and especially our language requires delivery and expediency, and so we may have a need to kind of label things in order to speak through explanations and descriptions more quickly to get to what matters. So the problem is not so... Uh, skip frames detected 89% over the last two minutes. I'm a little worried about what this message means. Okay. Of course, except that... No, of course, except that the kid goes into the world as he grows up, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, and all of a sudden have the whole world is talking about how some people are black and Asian and Latino, or at least in, in his country. And so far there isn't a grave embedded problem. Except that when they're 16 and 17, his friend Tony, the same one he was playing with, and sharing his toys with, runs off with the toy again. And this time he doesn't go to his, his parents. He goes to chase his Tony, demanding his toy back, and gets angry. And says, you are a thief. You know, you're bad, you know, mean, I'm never going to trust you again, and then he says something, and they say something, and they, this anger builds up, and you just want to hit back, right, when people start fighting, and pretty soon they resort to name-calling, to hurt, to wound, to express the anger and the frustration, and, you know, boom, there it comes, you fucking color. It's not because of the color. It is because he was feeling angry and needed to flush out, needed to knock sense into him that he was really upset and he doesn't think he's being fair. A description of any fight or argument. 
except that we need to deliver this explanation so that the other person will enter and reason is our hope in any fight or argument or war. Beat them up, up, strong enough, loud enough. This message is, now it's saying 73%. This is kind of important. I hope it, it's, I don't know what to do now. So, when he says, you bloody color, yeah, Tony stops and feels wounded outside of anything that would describe that fight. Because he said something that described his body, who and what he is at the core, in his essence as a being, as a human being. It, did it mean to go there so and so precisely to deliver so um, so uh, how can I say this so spot on to the place that would really hurt? Some somebody may have been so smart as to do that intentionally. Some other person just resorted to trying to say things quickly and, and throw out those labels in order to explain how angry and frustrated they were. But what matters is that the person got wounded and hurt beyond whatever they were arguing about. And so starts growing in society. You know, after Tony, maybe uh, they continue fighting and maybe he throws back at, at Johnny something that Johnny did to him before. Um, the fight is over, and Tony says, but did you have to call me fat, or that color, or an idiot, or a retard? Did you have to assault the very essence of my, of everything that I am? by describing this body as inadequate because it is a color, because it is ugly, or because it is retarded, or because of whatever. And so Johnny says, I'm sorry, I realize how hurtful that is. This is a conversation that we're no longer having. We are no longer knowing how to own the divisiveness, as in using a device, an instrument, of language in order to vent our anger. Instead, what we're doing, and what we're doing legally, is suppressing people from expressing that anger through certain words, and therefore installing the idea that those words are something that we ought to walk on eggshells about and not... No, they're normal. The, our appearance is not going anywhere. We shouldn't stop each other from talking about how different we look or we are from one another. If we want to be all human being with all human beings. We shouldn't say, yeah, you can be a human being, but don't mention this color or that language or that race or that capacity or, you know. Then we're curtailing and we're making ourselves less human in our interaction with one another. We shouldn't make laws that, that don't let us express whatever we see or think of another human being as a human being for whatever circumstances aging us both. So the, all those laws are making things worse because we're saying, oops, those are differences, those are contrasts, those are categories that we shouldn't go near. Now this message is saying four. I have no idea. I'm, I'm just now starting to learn stream, stream whatever, OBS. So how society, how racism, as we label it, quote-unquote racism, in society exists as an element has to do with this that I just explained. It has to do how we use what should be natural, 
even if we sometimes resort to using what we see or what we know about the other person to hurt them, to get their attention, to express how angry or how irate and disbelief we are about whatever happened. Because we can always go back and be empowered in knowing the gradiency of offense in order to say I'm sorry. But we're making ourselves impotent in knowing our in, in, impotent towards knowing ourselves in that in, in, and having and possessing that intelligence in knowing what is really bad, what is a transgression, to be able to be free to say I'm sorry because I am knowledgeable of what is too much is important that we protect. We should be able to know what is too much so that we are always free because we are capable of going back and saying I'm sorry I called you that. When we start being afraid of saying that because it's that category that we're not supposed to not uh, have, although we're making it permanent because we continue to identify it, and we become a less comfortable society with being human beings with one another and less able to be versatile and flexible and recover where we went too far or where we were damaging and fix socially, we become less empowered, we become more stifled, and we become a society that resorts to being smart about ideological mechanicalisms in society that say what kind of person I am. We, we substitute our simple, plain wisdom and flexibility and knowledge and capacity to say I'm sorry with an, a different type of social argument which goes nowhere, which is arguing something that doesn't exist, that we invented. And so, we should be okay with times that we get angry and we resort to saying somebody, but you're, to somebody, but you're an ugly girl, nobody's going to go out with you anyways. Those things need to happen, and we need to trust that that's not who we're going to become, because we, none of us, none of us want to be that or to feel that as, as, as far as being treated like that. None of us want to call somebody ugly or be called ugly. None of us want that. None of us want to insult somebody with a noun color or be insulted by a noun color. So that is, we should trust that that is never going to flourish in society or in culture, but right now we are afraid that those things will flourish because we have become incapable of repairing with our own hands what anybody would know is, a, is too much, is too offensive, is hurtful. And nobody wants to harm the, the wholeness of the collective society because it, that is, like I said before, the prime directive of evolutional purpose for any Life ultimately will always go back to repairing whatever damaged the integrity of that collective. So we need to be free to make our mistakes, the mistakes that are overzealous, over whatever intelligence, precocious, uh, thinks too much and knows too many things that are useless and wrong and whatever, we're, however we're erring with our civilization, we need to be able to, you know, I think I made my point, but this, all, this also goes to an argument I always have with, um, with somebody about the law. He always says the law is paramount. We all need to respect the law and shut up, you know, just obey the law and that's how a country functions. I and mean, he's British, you know, but anyway. And I, I'm like, who made the law? I always tell them, who created it and for what reason? We created the law to help us, to assist us. We are the creators of law, which means that we're also the ones that would be capable of saying, oops, we got that one wrong, that's not really helping us. Us is always paramount before we create law. We decide if this law is helping us 
or this law is creating problems. And we should be versatile in removing law and saying this is just complicating, taking up too much time, resources, making people enforce things that it's not really working, it's creating more harm than help. We need to be able to take this out, remove this law. Human beings need to be empowered over the law. It shouldn't be a written ink document that tells you how to be hu a human being. Human beings invented the law to assist them, not to obey it blindly and not question it. Anyways, it's a, it's to me it's principle logic, and I always have this argument with this person, and uh, I don't have the chance to either, but it's similar to what I'm saying before. We, we, we have to be empowered over the beliefs that 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 end up causing the way we behave with one another. We, we ought to be able to say we were wrong in believing that and we can see how much damage we're doing to ourselves socially by these things that we have been teaching our children. If we are incapable of changing and removing old beliefs, Who's going to do it? <laughs> Who's going to say we, we had it wrong for all these years? Nobody will, and we'll continue to blindly going by, uh, continue going by ideologies and beliefs that were constructs, intellectual constructs. Anyways, okay, so that's the last commentary edition I'm going to add. Thanks. Bye.